Hello everyone. Today's learning target is I am learning to graph ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Let's take a look at some vocabulary. We have coordinates and coordinate plane for our vocabulary. Coordinates, numbers used to identify the position of a point relative to the X and Y axes of the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane, a two-dimensional system in which a point is described by its distance from two perpendicular lines called axes. If you take a look up here, right here you have the x-axis and the y-axis. These are coordinates that are plotted on the coordinate plane. Now, we call that an ordered pair. When you have x, comma, y, and they're in parentheses, x-coordinate and y-coordinate, we call that an ordered pair. Let's keep that in mind as we go through today's lesson. First, I want you to take a look at these three arrangements of blocks. What do you notice about the first three arrangements in the sequence below? So here's sequence one, two, and three. And down here, it shows you the back view of arrangement two and three because arrangement two and three have cubes you can't see from the front. So there's the back, okay? In a second, I'm gonna have you discuss what do you notice about these first three arrangements in this sequence? And then I also want you to answer this question. What will arrangement four and five look like? And how do you know? So you can sketch it, you can write it, or you can just talk through with someone that you are watching with. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, what are you noticing about the first three arrangements? I noticed that arrangement one had two and it wasn't fully filled in square. And then arrangement two still had that on the top. When I looked at the back, I think that this whole layer is filled in. So it added a layer of one, two, three, four. So four, five, six in this arrangement. And then on this one, it looks like it added another layer of four underneath, like a two by two layer. So that would be four, eight, nine, 10. So what will four and five look like? Here they are right here. So it's arrangement four, it added another layer to the bottom of four, a two by two. And then arrangement five, one more. So this had three full layers and the little two on top. And this had four full layers and then the two on top. The picture below shows the first five arrangements in the cube sequence we've been working on with this section. Record the number of cubes it takes to build each arrangement. So how many did it take to build this first arrangement? And then how about this one? It had two and then added four on the bottom, so six. Okay, so this arrangement is like the last arrangement, but then it added four more on the bottom, so it should be 10. Okay, now this arrangement is like the last arrangement, but then added four more on the bottom, so it should be 14, right? Okay, what about the last one? What'd you get? Did you say four more on the bottom? 18? Great. Okay, so now we're going to write an ordered pair to represent each cube arrangement. Use the arrangement number for the first number in the pair, which we call the x-coordinate, and the number of cubes it takes to make the arrangement for the second number in the pair, which we call the y-coordinate. For example, arrangement 1 would be written as 1, 2, and arrangement 2 would be written as 2, 6. Remember, this is the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. X is the number of arrangement, Y is how many blocks it took to build. And then arrangement two, they already gave to us as two comma six. Okay, I want you to write a coordinate pair for arrangement three, four, and five on your own. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so for arrangement three, the X is the arrangement number, so three, and the Y is how many it took to build, so 10, three comma 10. Again, arrangement four, Four is the X coordinate and how many it took to build. 14 is the Y coordinate, four comma four. And then arrangement five should be five comma 18. How did you do? Okay, let's graph this. Here is a graph and across the bottom is going to be the arrangement number. And then 
the y-axis is going to be the number of cubes. So I copied the coordinate pairs up here for you already. I'm gonna plot the first couple and then I'm gonna have you go in and you can point to the screen or you can sketch it out and you're gonna plot the last three. Okay, so arrangement one, the x is one and the y is two and then the second arrangement, the x is two and the y is six. Okay, I'm gonna have you try arrangement three, four and five. Okay, arrangement three. So the arrangement number is the X and the number of cubes is the Y. So it should be right there, at three comma 10. And then we should be at four comma 14, five comma 18. What do you think they would be for six and seven? Well, let's draw our line and maybe that will help us. Okay, you're always going to want to get a straight edge to connect every line. And there is the line that represents our sequence of arrangements. If we were at arrangement six, the graph is telling us that it would take 22 cubes to make it. And then at arrangement seven, it would take 26 cubes to make it. So if the next sequence had 22, and the seventh sequence had 26. Does that go with our pattern where the number of cubes goes up by four each time? 18 plus four more is 22, and 22 plus four more is 26. It does. So the yellow tiles represent a pool deck. So the outside of the pool where you can kind of sit on the cement area. And then the inside tile represents the water. We have pool one, pool two, and pool three. Let's keep track of some things in a T-chart over here. Okay, so for pool one, there was one water tile, but there were three, six, seven, eight border tiles, okay, the cement part on the outside. And then for pool two, there were four water tiles, but this time there were 12 border tiles. And then pool three, did you notice that there were nine water tiles and 16 border tiles? What do you think is going to happen with pool four and pool five? Can you sketch them out? How many water tiles and how many border tiles would be in pool four and pool five? Okay, I want you to try that now. Sketch it out or talk it through with someone who is watching with you. Okay, let's take a look. Here is pool four and pool five. So let's add it to our T-chart. For pool four, there are four, eight, 12, 16 water tiles and one, two, three, four, five, six. So then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 border tiles. And then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 water tiles and 24 border tiles. Hmm. Do you notice any patterns in our T-chart that we made? That's what I want you to really focus on right now. Can you see any patterns with the water? Can you see any patterns with the border tiles or in between them? Go ahead and discuss that now. Okay, so what did you say? Uh, were you noticing that for most of it, the water tiles were less than the border tiles, but then all of a sudden at the end, at pool five, there were more water tiles than border tiles. That's strange. Did you also notice that the border is just going up by four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 16, 20, it's like counting by fours, but that's not consistent over here, one to four. 4 to 9, 9 to 16, 16 to 25. Hmm, I wonder if that is going to affect what our graph looks like. Let's take a look at the border tiles first. Here are the first five arrangements in the tile pool sequence. In the box below each arrangement, write the number of gray tiles it took to build the border for each. So the gray tiles are what were previously the yellow tiles. So it just wants you to write how many tiles did it take for arrangement one, two, three, four and five. I'm gonna have you do those on your own and then let's come back together and check our answers. Go ahead. Okay, how many gray tiles did it take to make the border in arrangement one? Eight, good. How about arrangement two? 12 and arrangement three? 16, it's going up by four, right? Arrangement four, 
20, so then arrangement 5 is 24. Now, it says to write an ordered pair to represent each of the pool borders in the square. Use the arrangement number for the first number in the pair, which we learned is the x-coordinate, and the number of gray tiles it took to make the border around the pool for the second number in the pair, which we learned is the y-coordinate. Okay, I'm going to have you once again try all five of these ordered pairs on your own. Okay, so arrangement one, the arrangement number is the x, and how many tiles it took is the y, so 1, 8. Arrangement two, you should have 2, 12. Arrangement three, 3, 16. Arrangement four, 4, 20. And arrangement five, 5, 24. How did you do? Excellent, let's move on and let's do the water tile. So here's another picture of the first five arrangements in the tile pool sequence. In the box below each arrangement, write the number of white tiles it took to build the water. How many white tiles for each? Go ahead. Okay, so for arrangement one, we just have one water tile. And now here we have a two by two, we have four water tiles. And here we have a three by three, we have nine water tiles. Here we have a four by four, we have 16 water tiles. And here we have a five by five, we have 25 water tiles. Now, did anybody notice that pattern? It was the arrangement number times itself gave us the water number. Next part. Again, we're going to write an ordered pair to represent each of the water areas in the sequence. Use the arrangement number for the first number, the x coordinate in the pair, and the number of white tiles it took to make the water in the pool for the second number, the y coordinate in the pair. Go ahead and do that now, and then we'll check our answers together. Okay, here we go. Arrangement number and the number of white tiles. So you should have 1, 1, and then 2, 4 the ordered pair 3 comma 9 and then 4 comma 16 and finally the ordered pair 5 comma 25 how did you do okay we're actually going to graph both of those lines and i color coded it so the pool border is still the gray and the pool water is the blue i copied over the coordinate pairs here i'm going to do a couple of the gray and then have you finish it off so for the first point the x is at one and the y is at eight so it should be here and our second coordinate pair the x is at two and the y is at 12 so it should be there Okay, go ahead and take some time, either sketch out the graph yourself or just come to the screen and point at where the next three in our sequence should go on this line. Go ahead. So our next ordered pair, three comma 16, right there. Did you get it? And then four comma 20, right there. And then finally, five comma 24. Okay, using a straight edge, you will draw your line on your graph through all of the points. And then if we take a look, if we went to arrangement six, it would be at 28, which is four more from 24, right? And then if it was at arrangement seven, then we would be at 32, four more from 28. Okay, so every time we're going up four and over one, up four and over one. It makes a straight line because every time we're just adding four more to the y and one more to the x. What's going to happen with our next line? Okay, let's start it out. We'll do a few together. Our first point is at 1, 1. Kind of hard to get completely perfectly accurate here because the 1 is halfway between the 0 and the 2, right? Okay, and then 2, 4. So over 2, up 4. It should be there. Great. Okay, you go ahead and do the next three ordered pairs. Go ahead. Okay, our next ordered pair, x is three, y is nine. So three, nine is gonna be in between here. Okay, and then four, 16, four, 16 right there. And then we have five, 25 right there. This is when Suddenly, the water has more tiles than the border. Can I draw a straight line through that? I can't, can I? Okay, 
I'm in order to be able to connect my lines, at, my points, excuse me, accurately, I'm going to try to plot uh, arrangement six and arrangement seven. So arrangement six, remember, it was five times five is 25, four times four is 16. So six times six is 36, right? And then seven times seven is 49. Let's see. I really see that curve now. Do you see that? That is not a straight line. Why is that? Okay, well, let's really take a look at that T-chart we started earlier. So on the border line, it was just a straight line. A plus four is 12, plus four is 16, plus four is 20, plus four is 24. We were just consistently adding four. That made our straight line. What's happening over here on the water line? Can you figure that out? Go ahead and either write it out or talk to someone who's watching with you. Go ahead. Okay, did you notice this? So we added three. So we went over one, up three, over one, now up how many this time? Five. Up one, two, three, four, five, and then over one. Okay, now how many is between these two? Seven. What are you noticing about this? Three, five, seven, it's always two more than the previous, and then nine. So we're not going up at a steady rate. We're going up three, and then we're going up five, and then we're going up seven, and then we're going up nine. So then two more than nine, we should be going up 11, right? So one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We were right. So then it should be we're going up 13, right? Over one, up two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. There we go. That's why it's not a straight line. We're not going up the same amount every time. We're going up two more than the previous every time. Okay, I think you're ready to try out our assignment. Okay, here is today's assignment. Now, it looks like a really long one, and there's a lot of words. So you might want to take a quick snapshot of the screen so you can refer back to it later. But let's read through it. Anthony is a junior in high school. He decided to get a job this summer so he could put some money in his college savings account. His goal was to put $1,000 into his account, but still have time to rest up before school started again. He's a very good math student who loves computers, and he was lucky to be offered a summer job with two different software company. Company one offered to pay Anthony $1 on the first day and double the amount each day, a dollar the first day, two the next day, four the third day, eight the fourth day, and so on. Company two offered to pay Anthony $75 every day. Which job should Anthony accept if he wants to reach his goal of earning $1,000 as quickly as possible? So on the next page, which you can see right here on the screen, fill in the table for each company's payment plan. You can stop as soon as the total amount of money reaches or goes over $1,000 for the plan and then do the other one. And then on another page, you're going to graph the running total for each day. Graph each plan in a different color and mark the key at the bottom of the sheet to show which is which. Finally, answer the question, which company's plan turned out to be the best and why? Okay, what you can do is you can easily just write this on a piece of paper and then you can sketch out a graph, do the best you can with straight lines. You can use the straight lines that are on line paper already and then do the y-axis lines or flip it and use those as the y-axis lines and draw in your own x-axis lines. If you have graph paper, that's even better. Or you can, if you have a printer, you can print out graph paper from the internet. It's pretty easy to find. Okay, make sure you communicate with your teacher on how they want you to turn this in and I'll give you a couple more seconds to try to copy down the most important parts or to snap a picture of your screen now. Great job, fifth graders. I've really enjoyed doing some mathematics with you today. Thank you for joining me as you continue your learning from home. I look forward to seeing you again for our next lesson on KSPS. Thank you.